So keep that number in mind. Um, and, and historically, all the floods in the Brisbane River were, were sort of ranked um, above or below the 74 flood. The highest reliable flow measurement at that stage in the Brisbane River was at Savage Crossing, which is up near Fern Bar. And that was about 3,300. So you can see that there's a lot of, you know, the big difference between 3,300 is a reliable uh, measurement and 10,000, which was our estimate of 74. If you look at the uh, flood history of the Brisbane River and the diversity of your meteorology, um, a number of, you'll see obviously that uh, you know, our flood history goes back to about 1841 in terms of putting a number on a, on a flood level at, at the city gauge. There's a couple of historical or uh, anecdotal evidence of floods mm -hmm. earlier than 1841. Oxley mentions in his diary of 1824 of uh, seeing debris in uh, uh, 100 feet up in the air around, around Mobile. So you know, there's evidence of that. And Aborigines um, folklore says that uh, at some stage in the past, uh, the Brisbane River broke over the William Jolly uh, bridge area and came across the city. So there's been you know, some pretty big floods in Brisbane in the past. Um, in terms of what's happened in the, in the uh, in the 1800s, we obviously had some awful big floods. Um, there's the 1841, 1844, the two in 1893. Well, actually, there were four floods in 1893. Uh, we had the two big ones in February. There was a small one in between. There was another reasonable flood in, the, in June of that year. So, and then we go through a whole uh, period between in the early, the first part of the 20th century when there weren't too many big floods. There was one in 1931. Um, then 74 stands out there in the, in the middle, and then obviously 2011. But from, from a hydrologic perspective, that's not, not all, all a stationary record. There's, obviously, there's influences on that record uh, all through that uh, period that um, mean it's difficult for us to just take that record and assess it as a, as a homogenous record. For example, um, the heights up until about 1910 were impacted by uh, river dredging and river works in the Lower Brisbane River. Um, there's, <coughs> you read some articles about uh, uh, as the ships got bigger and bigger, you know, they had to um, improve the, uh, the channels in the, in the Brisbane River right up to South Bank um, so that the ships could come in and unload. So but, uh, there's a lot of dredging works carried out in the, uh, up until about 1910. Then we end up with a short period up until uh, about 1940 when uh, Somerset Steam started destruction. So anything after about 1940 is impacted by Somerset Dam at the Port Office stage. And then obviously uh, Bivonator Dam and Somerset Dam have a significant influence after about 1983. So that provides us with a really, in the past, it provided us with a really difficult uh, record to deal with. So what's happened? There's a bit of a summary of the river works. Um, first started in about 1867 when they uh, moved, moved the bar around the, the middle of the entrance to the river and continued until uh, 1910. But even as uh, late as 1965, there were some uh, works carried out uh, when 17 mile rocks were removed between uh, Brisbane and Sydney. And you read all the literature, and, and it seems that. Um, People have assigned a uh, lowering of the peak height record at the port office of about 1.5 metres uh, to those river works. And yeah, that's never been actually proven, but that's what was generally accepted. And I think in, over time, someone wrote it down and just got carried on and carried on and carried on. Whether it's true or not, I think there are still remains. <coughs>
So that's where that uh, 10,000 came from. And you can see then that uh, Centenary Bridge, we've got the uh, 1974 flood level, the 1893 flood level. At the time, 1893 was thought to be about 14,000 cubic litres a second. So you'd say, yeah, that reasonably happy with that. It's a bit of a bit of a rating curve, pretty rough rating curve, but based on a few flow measurements and uh, some estimates of pipe, you'd be reasonably happy with that. Um, so just crossing rating. Um, this is where the 3,300 was measured. I think in the flood in 1968, 1974. Uh, the rain was extrapolated from 16 metres up to about 25 metres and it put an estimate of um, about 7,500 cubic metres a second so we're just crossing it. So you know, the, the signs at that time were pretty good. Estimates of 1893, uh, the historical peak level was 8.35. Uh, river works were estimated to have lowered the peak level by about 1.5 and in uh, 1999 SKM came up with an estimate of about 13,700. So it's all tying together pretty good at that stage. So what's happened there? Well, the 2011 flood changed our knowledge of uh, the estimation of <coughs> big flood of flows in the Brisbane River for a number of reasons. Well, firstly, we had the release data from, uh, from Wyvernow Dam. We undertook a series of uh, boosting Doppler current profile engagements in Centenary Bridge. We had a Mike 11 model of the lower Brisbane River and DERM um, revised the uh, Savages crossing rate. So what's that all in? So, why when they release are considered to be pretty reasonable, uh, reasonably accurate as, as the rating, the gap ratings are based upon a physical model and they've also been <coughs> checked by computational fuel fluid dynamics. So we're reasonably confident that we know how much water comes out of the water there. We also know, because it's a big bucket, volume of water that goes into the dam. The other thing that's been very valuable as a result of 2011, not just the peak of the outflow, which occurred just here, but it's this bit here which is really important for us. And that, that was occurred during the drain down the dam when we were releasing constant 3,500 cubic metres a second for about four or five days. And that provides an excellent reference point establishing and verifying ratings along the lower river because it's, it's independent of any hydrological or hydraulic influences because it's basically steady state for several days. It was also equal to the previous highest measured floods that were just crossing. So we've got a, a really good check on uh, what our thought we thought in the past. Uh, then the peak of the flood, we undertook a, a series of acoustic um, Doppler current profile measurements at the Centenary Bridge. We were fortunate that um, this was on the Wednesday afternoon that our gauging team was out there, uh, that's the equipment which we had purchased for us by the Bureau of Meteorology, used once and uh, right, took moorings during that particular event and ended up in uh, Morton Bay. <laughs> but we did get the um, current meter of the, the measurements, um, about five or six measurements on the on that afternoon during the peak, and that uh, flow estimate there was measured fairly several times around uh, 9,800 cubic meters a second. Interestingly enough, we got the uh, current meter back at the beginning of this year because uh, someone headed into a uh, federal police station. Still good. <laughs> so all of a sudden, um, we've got all of these additional series of measurements at the Centenary Bridge. We'll call use the Centenary Bridge as a key point for us. Because uh, that's the only point in the, in the lower Brisbane River you can actually physically measure flows because uh, you can drag your Doppler across it. There's no other basis point. So you now you can see that uh, we've got 2013 flood, uh, 2011 flood, 1974 flood, which is two metres higher than 2011, and, and the 1893 flood. So we've got more confidence now in these points. This is the 3,500, which is uh, steady state flows, and our acoustic Doppler current river flows of, uh, of 10,000. So we ended up with this particular problem that um, we think 74 was 10,000, and we measured 10,000 in 2011, but we know 74 was two metres high. 
so it causes a bit of a problem. So I'm just uh, sorry about Crosby Brady. Um, part, part way through uh, 2011, during the commission hearings, we commissioned SKM to develop the Michael Evan model for us on the Lower Brisbane River. And we know that uh, Van Crosby um, is a pretty good cross section. It's very stable. It's uh, uninfluenced by uh, river works or tides. So I think we can come up with a fairly robust rating there using the Michael Evan model. And that gave us a flow of about 16,000 at uh, Van Crosby in 1993. Flow of about 10,500 in 1974, and 2011 about 10,000. So we're reasonably happy that we've got a good estimate of the flows in Mount Crosby historically. So we're just crossing rating. Now, this is one interesting one. So, Dern re rated savages based upon steady state flows, big, big flows out, out of the dam, and they've come up with a significant increase in flow, big flow. Savages crossing compared to uh, what we want to do in the past. What our best estimate was in the past, sorry. So 74, uh, which was thought to be about 7,500, is now about um, 9,000 savages crossing. A big increase in discharge, big discharge. So arising out of all, all that information, um, we came up with the suggestion that uh, estimates of pre previous historical floods in terms of peak flow were, were far too low. Uh, we've seen an annual and tree flood increase from about 13,700 to about 16,000 people per second. And 74 go up from 10,000 to 11,500. And as the dam operators, we felt there was a compelling need to uh, reassess the historical flows as the peaks and volumes have a significant impact on their flow. And also, of course, they have a potential, uh, huge potential impact on the floodplain management issues. The the world. So we made a decision to model every single flood event uh, since 1887 where we had sufficient data. That in itself was a, a huge um, data collection exercise. Um, we got all the data ran for from BOM. Uh, we got all the plumograph data we put from BOM. We used all the data from the uh, radiosometry alert systems and basic water, bomb councils. We've got uh, water level data from uh, bomb, uh, time series from dirt and bomb, flood warning gauges. We obviously have our own dam level and gate settings for SQ water. There was a huge exercise in checking all that data. Um, and you know, this gives you some indication we oops, we mapped up. We mapped up every event and uh, checked the rainfall, rainfall visual. We looked at peak stage relationships to check uh, uh, whether there were consistencies of peak heights between the stations. We checked every every graph we used in, in the model. So that was a huge uh, data, data checking exercise. We've, as I said, looked at um, a lot of events. Uh, we selected about 50 events on the basis of the magnitude of the event and available data. Um, some events were significant in one, one part of the basin, but maybe not in the lower Brisbane River. We, we've used a huge variation of events. The events cover a good spread of months. Uh, for example, October 2010 was the first flood that had been recorded in the Brisbane River in, in an October in, 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 in the information we had. One of the things that we, we were very keen on emphasizing that every flood, flood is different, uh, it's real, and it bears no resemblance to design. <coughs> um, it's very difficult to find this idealized uh, uh, time and space patterns that are used in design floods that didn't real event. And not all the data was found in the database. Um, there's a huge amount of information out there, and all of our engineers that have come before us have gone through all this sort of stuff before. Maybe their techniques were as uh, well, they didn't have computers and what have you, but there was, they've done all this sort of stuff before. And, and you yeah, know, it's not to be, that sort of information was, it was not, we wanted to make sure we, we captured it all and we, uh, we wanted to use as much as possible. Yeah, for example, there's these lots, lots of folders we found that, that had hypergraphs, you know, just recorded in height. You might find that in the database. 
This is a map of 1893. When you look at the detail, you look at this detail right here, it's really some beautiful information on that. Brisbane City Council did a whole lot of uh, ISO legal maps in the early 60s uh, of flood in the early 90s. Again, you won't find it in a database. But it's valuable information. So what we did is we looked at all the floods between, before 1955 and uh, we call these our test events because there's not sufficient data, really, detailed data, to um, cover up models, but we certainly develop models. <coughs> um, so the quality and quantity of the data that we, we have a rough sparse daily rainfall network, probably in the 1893 flood, there are only about 70 daily rainfall stations in the Brisbane Pacific area. Virtually no blue well, here isn't no blue grab data in the early floods, um, but still, um, <coughs> what you want, um, very limited rain water level data. You don't know often uh, what date it was, or exactly where the station was, or, or anything, but this information, again, is valuable for, uh, uh, for modeling purposes. One of the advantages of uh, the flood before 1955 is that uh, we didn't have to take games. So we looked at a um, whole range of events. Um, you can see that all those events down through there, 1841, 1844, you couldn't find rainfall data. You model those, but you model all the others. And as I said, this is the bottom of the previous slide. <coughs> a section of the river, Brisbane River, railway crossing in the river. So that railway bridge there um, was there during the 1893 flood. And then you know, buried in here, is some um, information about the surface velocities that were measured during that event. And so we can then start to infer from that sort of information and the cross-sectional information from there, an estimate of the 1893 flood, what they were thinking back in 1893. Again, information that we really don't want just to build the sky. Between 55 and 76, um, quality quantity of data increases. We've got uh, an expansion in the daily rainfall network, increasing the amount of bluegraph uh, data, more water level data. Things get complicated by the uh, adaptive sun's in, in the system. Um, and we're looking in that period, this is the floods of uh, 55 big ones, 55, 68, 74. And there's some other big floods in other parts of the river which didn't, uh, didn't cause the problems. Between 83 and 92, again, the quality and quantity of data increases further. Um, more rain, daily rainfall network, uh, increased amount of blue graph, more water level data, um, significant influence of summer setting, wiped out there and there. Um, we've got the 80, 1983 flood, which was uh, during partly, the wiped out was partly built. We've got two floods in 89, and uh, again, other floods in other parts of the basin. Post 92, um, we've got excellent rainfall data. The alert system was installed in the Brisbane River in the early 90s. So every one of those points on that map is a pluviograph. So we've got some great, great uh, rainfall data. Uh, more water level data. And, and this time we, we know that the, the floods post 92 have been significantly mitigated by, by some sort of like that there. Uh, 1996 was a, is a very good flood to model for, from our point of view uh, because um, it was completely a wide, wide wind flood and there was no uh, release from wide wind in that particular uh, event. And that gives us a good basis for working out what happens in the block area in Bremen, for example. 1999 was a, a pretty big flood. It was bigger than 74 in the top end of the Brisbane River. Obviously, uh, 2010, there were three floods in October, October and two big ones in December. 2011, which everyone knows about, and 2013. So we've um, gone back and we've selected 48 events in that period. And we've uh, developed a suite of uh, herbs, rainfall runoff models. And we've calibrated on all the post-1955 floods. And we've tested on all the pre-1955 floods. And from our point of view, the key advantages of that is that uh, there's a of that large number of historical floods. It gives us a better assessment of uh, rain and loss parameters because when you come to a dam operation situation, 
keep going. We have a lot of small funds as well as large funds. We're not just interested in, in things. Um, some funds are quite unique and display different characteristics to, to other funds. And the other thing we, we've uh, spent a lot of time on is analysing and uh, looking at the ratings of every station we use in the prison group. And that's over 60 stations. So we've made sure that we've got a rating, a consistent rating, not only uh, from event to event, but also uh, ensuring continuity uh, within an event. 